<laughs> Great. Okay, let's make a start. Uh, welcome to Neurotino, everyone. Um, today we have one paper presented by Valentina to us. And the way it works is we, um, well, some, some of us present a paper or a book sometimes, and you get to ask your questions uh, either here on Zoom or over on YouTube. And we try to answer them to the best of our knowledge. Uh, generally, everyone is welcome to present. It doesn't have to come from us. You're welcome to just bring your own paper and uh, present it to us and we have a chat about it. Right, I think that's all we need to share. Uh, Valentina, take it away. Okay, thank you for the introduction, Steph. Um, this is actually a follow-up paper, um, follow-up from uh, the discussion we had on uh, cortical restatement in uh, developmental amnesia patients, and in particular, uh, some questions uh, in the session after the paper presentation were on the uh, difference between uh, semantic and uh, episodic memory. Um, and so Stephanie uh, brought, my we brought this paper on, uh, to my attention and it's on uh, the varying demands of, for cognitive control reveals shared neural uh, processes supporting semantic and episodic memory retrieval. Um, so basically um, semantic and then uh, episodic memory have been uh, investigated in um, in, in, independently um, in all over the, the literature, uh, mostly independently, uh, because um, semantic memory uh, refers to uh, the conceptual knowledge that we have uh, of the world. Um, retrieving the, um, the example we gave uh, last time, um, semantic memory refers to the concept that uh, in concert, we listen to music, uh, while um, episodic memory uh, refers to uh, our memory um, of, of the world. So um, the fact that uh, in a concert two weeks ago, we listened to music. Now, I really hope we'll, we can uh, go to concert, concert back very soon. <laughs> and. Um, so uh, these two type of memories, memories have been investigating independently and uh, different uh, cortical and subcortical structures have been uh, related to uh, the um, uh, retrieval uh, and construction of these two memories. In particular, for semantic memory, uh, it has been um, linked to uh, the activation of the inferior frontal cortex, uh, posterior medial temporal gyrus, inferior parietal sulcus, and region of the cortical midline. Whilst um, the retrieval of episodic memory has been associated to uh, the activation of uh, posterior um, medial network, in particular the retrospinal cortex, posterior singular. Uh, cortex and <clears throat> angular gyri, gyri and uh, medial temporal lobe. Um, however, um, a few uh, recent studies uh, showed that um, episodic and semantic memory have um, some uh, shared cortical uh, structures. Um, in particular, uh, the uh, retrieval of uh, the automatic retrieval of uh, um, semantic memory has been associated to the activity in the posterior parietal cortex uh, um, that par partially match uh, um, the retrieval of episodic memory uh, memories. Uh, while um, the controlled retrieval of semantic information has been uh, linked to uh, the activation on the left uh, inferior frontal gyrus. Uh, um, and this resembles the activity of uh, um, retrieval of uh, episodic memory traces. So um, the uh, goal uh, of this study uh, was to investigate whether um, memory and uh, um, episodic memory have um, 
different uh, cortical um, substructures substruct sub that support uh, the retrieval of this memory um, independently of uh, or uh, taking into account uh, the strategies of uh, recollection of uh, the retrieval of these memories. Um, or if they have uh, a common base uh, that is associated to uh, the other uh, cognitive functions that um, are engaged during the uh, retrieval of this memory, and in particular, in particularly of uh, cognitive control. Um, uh, in fact, uh, other um, studies that investigated uh, the uh, retrieval of these memories um, that uh, um, try to manipulate the uh, load of cognitive control uh, into the retrieval, um, mainly focused on uh, meta-analysis and, um, and, and over uh, single case studies. So uh, the authors um, employed uh, functional emanating resonance uh, to their uh, study objective and divided the study into experiments. In experiment one, uh, they collected 46 subjects and uh, um, they measured the neural activity uh, during uh, weak uh, versus strong semantic and episodic memories. While in um, NE2 uh, investigate uh, whether there are uh, cortical and subcortical structures that are, that are um, engaged during uh, both uh, the two uh, long-term memory types in, uh, during the uh, control retrieval of the uh, two memory types. But while in experiment two, uh, the authors investigated the uh, individual uh, difference um, uh, between uh, the in intrinsic connectivity of regions that uh, um, they found in the experiment one, so that uh, are shared in the to uh, control retrieval of the memories and um, uh, to uh, investigate whether uh, they are um, connected uh, to other uh, structure and cognitive uh, functions. Um, I'm not gonna spoil you straight away the results because I'm gonna show you the um, uh, the uh, two experiments. So uh, in experiment one, uh, participants, uh, first they went to uh, through um, fMRI testing for the semantic task, where they uh, are presented with um, a probe word and uh, uh, both uh, with weak and strong related um, uh, words that they had to choose. For instance, uh, the probe word was B and um, uh, strong related, uh, semantic rela semantically related um, words were, was uh, uh, sting. Um, and uh, then after this uh, semantic task, uh, fMRI testing, they went through uh, um, lab training. So outside the fMRI scan, they trained the uh, episodic memory um, associations, uh, both with a, a passive and uh, uh, an active approach. So in the passive approach, the participants were shown with uh, um, pairs of, uh, of words uh, that are not uh, semantically related, such as uh, apple and flute. And uh, in the active uh, uh, session, uh, participants were asked to um, combine a probe word, for instance, apple, with the uh, previously uh, shown uh, couple, so a uh, couple of words, so in this case, flute. Um, the authors performed a strong encoding and a weak encoding. In the strong, the strong encoding, uh, the active part was uh, presented uh, for six rep repetition, while in the weak encoding, the active part uh, were executed for only two repetition uh, in order to match the strong association and which and weak association of the semantic task. Uh, finally, participants 
um, went through uh, an fMRI testing of four day episodic memory tasks uh, that re resemble the semantic task testing. So in the fMRI, um, they had to, uh, they were presented with a probe, um, the probe word, and they had to choose uh, the coupled words that they uh, learned in the um, uh, lab training, uh, both for the uh, strong association, so the strong encoding of the active phase, and the weak association, so the weak encoding uh, of the lab training. And the, uh, the um, behavioral um, uh, results show that uh, uh, overall, uh, the strong uh, association um, is uh, uh, easier. So they had, the participant had better performance than the weak uh, association trials. And this is true uh, for both semantic and episodic memory. Um, and then uh, uh, in overall, uh, the uh, semantic memory task, uh, it's uh, easier, uh, sorry, the episodic memory task is easier than uh, the sem semantic memory ones. Uh, here we have uh, as a score measures, the percentage of uh, correct responses the correct response latency, and then the inverse efficient, uh, efficiency score, which is uh, um, the response latency uh, weighted by uh, incorrect, incorrect uh, um, responses. And then the fMRI results uh, show that uh, the um, activation for the semantic uh, long-term type of memory um, it uh, uh, pinpoints to the left inferior frontal gyrus, while the activation of the episodic memory uh, over the semantic one uh, showed the activation of the uh, bilateral uh, angular gyri and um, the um, posterior cingulate and the uh, pre pre uh, precranial cortices. Um, while um on the sorry I have to move I have to move you <laughs> um the um, uh, they made a, a, an overlap so uh, to uh, confirm whether these these results are um uh, in line with the literature or not uh, they made they uh, took the the map of the activation and fed it to the neurosync meta-analysis and they saw they've seen that uh, um the the results uh, uh, match the the previous literature um then the comparison of the uh, weak association and the strong association uh, was made uh, uh, for the two types of memory uh, independently and then a conjunction analysis was uh, um, was performed um, and in particular the conjunction analysis results is more interesting for the purpose of the study and uh, they've seen that uh, there is a, a common pattern of uh, um, structures that uh, uh, are engaged during uh, weak association trials. So uh, when the um, the task is it's harder. So when the, uh, the the word association trials are uh, harder to perform, um, and the cortical activation pinpoints to the left inferior frontal gyru gyrus and the anterior insular um, cortex, um, and then via uh, a parcellation. Uh, of a functional fascination of seven network. Um, they've seen that uh, these two uh, structures are, um, in, are usually uh, involved in um, the uh, ventral attentional network, uh, the fault mode network, and uh, frontoparietal attentional uh, network. Um, and these are the results of the first study. I think there is uh, an image also for study two. No. Um, so the experiment two um, was performed on uh, a different sample of subjects 
uh, uh, yeah, uh, 140 participants. So it's um, independent from the, the ex experiment one. And uh, this participant performed um, resting state uh, um, functional analysis and uh, uh, a behavioral uh, task that it was similar to the one of the experiment one, but uh, outside of the of the um, of the scan. So uh, the results of the uh, resting state show that uh, um, they use the SSC regions, the left inferior frontal gyrus and then anterior uh, insular cortex, cortex. Um, and they seen that, uh, that there is a um, uh, anti, um, they call it um, uh, anti-correlation uh, with the uh, ventral medial prefrontal cortex. So, uh, and then they, um, Correlated uh, this uh, anti uh, lower positive connectivity with the um, results of the behavioral task, and they've seen that a better performance corresponded to um, a higher, a, a lower positive uh, connectivity in between between these two seat regions and the intermediate prefrontal cortex. Um, then they then they. Um, uh, taken the maps uh, of this uh, um, low positive uh, uh, connectivity um, and uh, fed it to uh, NeuroSynth to see um, how this, uh, this connectivity, uh, to, to what uh, cognitive functions this connectivity corresponds to or are, is uh, um, uh, involved into. And the, the results show that they are um, this connectivity is uh, related to what uh, is engaged during autobiographical memory, uh, semantic and episodic memory, the default mode, uh, memory retrieval, and also uh, more social abilities like, such as theory of mind, mentalization, um, and other uh, more. They uh, selected uh, the first 100 results. Um, Finally, they looked into the intrinsic connectivity of the ventral media prefrontal cortex, and they've seen that it positively uh, uh, connects with the default mode network um, and then uh, uh, the uh, silence ventral attentional network and the limbic network and the um, frontal parietal network. Um, so uh, take home message. Um, is that um, the, uh, both uh, the um, semantic and episodic memory share um, similar uh, structure, um, um, neural structures, in particular uh, in uh, the retrieval of the, of the two memories, which is the uh, left um, inferior frontal gyrus and then the uh, anterior insular cortex. Um, the left inferior frontal gyrus has been uh, already um, shown to be involved into uh, uh, cognitive uh, control. And then uh, um, probably uh, not. So the, the results show that um, the uh, activation of this, uh, um, so the, the more the uh, cognitive uh, control, um, the less activation of the uh, ventral media prefrontal cortex uh, and uh, uh, enhance uh, of the default mode network and then uh, um, other uh, um, attention uh, associated uh, functions. Thank you. Thanks, Valentina. Uh... Any questions? Leah. Uh, thanks, Valentina. I was wondering uh, if they share um, a same structural uh, uh, basis with um, the, the episodic and semantic memory. Is there maybe a test uh, that can include uh, uh, both of them? Uh, like, uh, so if a patient have a uh, uh, an impairment or a lesion in that area. There is a way of capture, of capture the combination of these two abilities or uh, you just test it separately in a neuropsychological uh, test. Just I was wondering. 
Thank you, Leah, for, for the question. And it's actually uh, the opposite. The, the issue is the opposite. So oh. it's very uh, difficult to disentangle um, semantic memory and uh, episodic memory. Uh, in fact, the, the authors include this in the, in the limitation of the study uh, because um, the semantic memory task um, may entangle um, um, association of words that are strongly um, related to uh, episodic uh, memory. Uh, and it's, it's, it's true also the opposite. So uh, the, the episodic memory task uh, may entangle words that uh, uh, for someone could be semantically related. Ah, okay. So they are combined with reality and that's in the anatomy. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Michelle, you also had a question. Um, so, um, sorry, I arrived a little late and I didn't, I didn't see the design of the experiment, but were the participants supposed to respond like verbally during the MR, during the scan? That's a good question. Um, we can have a look at the... Mm. I don't think they they respond verbally. Uh, experiment one. I don't see it. Okay. The experiment one description. It was a material like a uh, verbal. Uh, yeah, so they they see um, a word, the probe word, uh, on the screen, and then uh, three um, choices, and they have to uh, pick the the associated word to the to the probe one. I see. Um, yeah, because uh, so you know, like in the literature, you have double dissociation between semantic and episodic memory, which mm. means that. They don't, they don't overlap or they don't completely overlap, which is fine with the results here. But because there is a conjunction analysis that is centered on the posterior part of the inferior frontal gyrus and the insula, which is a typical place where you can find some stroke, um, uh, those strokes are not associated with memory impairment. And so I'm trying to get my head around <laughs> yeah, okay. what, what the balance between psychology. Yeah, what, where, where do we find a common ground of understanding and, and bridge a gap between, you know, the clinic and this uh, experimentation? In, in well, happening? according to these, these results, I wouldn't expect uh, uh, a memory impairment uh, because it's more related to uh, cognitive control because these, uh, these structure here that are the results of the conjunction analysis, they actually uh, relate to the weak uh, association uh, performance. So words that are hard to associate. I see. And hence they, they need more cognitive control. I see, I see. All right, nice work. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No, none at the moment. Well, that would be it for today then, given that this is the only paper we had. Uh, thank you all for coming this morning. Have an exciting week in science and we shall see you next Monday again. Thank you.